Always swinging, always slinging uh, beer out of the top of the can here. You got to get it up on the mic. Or in the mouth. Couldn't hear. <sighs> Bad form. Well, if sometimes I get it up on the mic and I, it inhibits my actual cracking ability. I'm trying to figure <laughs> out where I'm, where I need to be. All right. Technique. What do yeah. you got, Matt? That, my, crack, got? my crack oh. previous to this, well, before Matt was here, great crack. I was practicing in the shower the other day. <laughs> That's unfair. You can't practice in the shower. That's yeah. you got great acoustics. <laughs> Give it to me. Oh, the quick draw. That was a deep one. All in one. Mm. Ooh, he must have talked to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> the deep one or the quick draw? <laughs> it ain't the second one. <laughs> so it's the deep one. <clears throat> oh, sorry. No, it's definitely the first one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so it is. It's the first. Do you, what, oh. do you wear that hat? Dude, I had to wear the hat. <laughs> is that your Florida hat? That is a Florida hat, right? Yeah, there. I got a hat in Florida. You have to. I mean, it's for the beach. Yeah, you need, a, you need a, that built-in shave. I have a Ron John, one of these too. What would you call that hat? A Geechee hat? No, this is my Riley Bymaster hat. Riley Bymaster hat. Yeah, I'll show you. I'll show you a picture. It's a good one. All right. Hmm. Yeah, I wish we were on video already. Do you, <laughs> do you think DK Metcalf <laughs> would wear that hat? Oh, he'd wear the hell out of this hat. I don't know. He's got a lot of hair. So it probably that would be pretty cool. This is an XL. This is an XL. I'm pretty sure anything DK put on would probably look cool. He would look better than I am. I can guarantee that. All right. I well, just, I just wish he had a little more body fat. Yeah. Well, I can give him a couple percentages. <laughs> Foreman's offered some up. Not a healthy percentage there, and it, it can't be sustainable from what was report early early reported there. Listen to several doctors tell me how that's not safe. Right. And you're going to lose. This is just a lot. Of, it's a slew of things. Google it. It. Uh, you can Google it. It's worth a Google. So DK Metcalf weighing in at the combine. 6'3", 228, 34 and 7 eighth arms, 6 and 7 eighth hands. And then we get to the 40. 6 and 7 eighth hands? I'm sorry, 9 Jeez, and 7 eighth hands. What is a scary movie, too? Crap <laughs> <laughs> on my good hand. <laughs> Stir these mashed potatoes. <laughs> 9 and 7 eighth hands. Normal hands. Big hands. Would you, did you say six three and three eighths? I said we round down, right? We're gonna if it's three eighths, we'll round. If it's six, five eighths, we'll round up. Okay, so, so six three, six well, just, three and a half. No, not quite. That'd be four eighths. If you divide by the common denominator, one half. All right, so he ran a four three three forty, <laughs> twenty seven bench press reps, um, a forty point five inch vertical, one thirty four broad, and then it really falls off from there. <laughs> You're not gonna tell him what the the, the the three cone trail there well so obviously all those numbers are great numbers and had everyone really there's a lot of there's a lot of 90s i'm seeing right there and an 80 but there's a lot of 90s i'm seeing right there and there's a two and a three you're talking about the percentiles oh it is yeah so most of those metrics that i read off were in the high 90s one or two in the in the mid to low 80s hand size and height were in the 80s all the rest in the uh, 90s to upper 90s. Yeah. And then you get down to the three cone, which notoriously bad, the 7.38 and the 20 shuttle, uh, 4.5, which is in the three and the two percentile of those things. So since 2003, there's been over 200 quarterbacks and 39 300 pound dudes that have recorded a better three cone drill than DeKalen Zacharias of House Metcalf. <laughs> I just wanted to say that. that. That's the fully? Yeah. That's the, the government? Zacharias of House that's, Metcalf. That's the government. I'm sure he doesn't like that. We're just up on that Game of Thrones because it's all about to happen. It's really here. Oh, it's here. I'm all right. So. <laughs> I want to talk about it. <laughs> we, got, we, we got into a five-minute uh, off, yeah. off track uh, right before we started here. Don't Jason, need to follow that up. J and if we do, Jason's going to be exposed for a, what would you call him? He's a casual. He's a casual. Filthy casual. Such a casual. casual. Is there like a game? Is it a throner? What are you? Is it a, a GOT or is there a. No, you're just not a casual. Yeah, okay. He's, wow. a, he's just a casual fan. I mean, the guy's only on the second watch through. I guess I won't be getting invited to the Game of Thrones trivia. I was actually. Gonna, view, I was actually. Viewing party. I was actually going to invite you to that. Fam's Brewing on Wednesday. But I didn't even know about the, the lady being old. I would be useless. Because I've never seen a full episode. I'm waiting until it's all over and then I'm going in. Yeah, but there's beer there, so that's true. I could go and I know those guys. Tom Good Brady guys. had a better three cone drill than DK. Right. So, but he did improve it at the pro day. To what? 
I don't know. It just said that he improved it. Well, it must have not been sub seven. It wasn't enough. <laughs> yeah. No. 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 Um, Which I don't know. I don't think I really care. I don't know why you run the three cone. Why run the it? The other guys we're going to talk about tonight, Butler, Harry, didn't run the three cone. Calvin Johnson, no three cone. Like Calvin. typically guys that big of, ooh, another good one. Two out of three ain't bad. Out for mid-season meatloaf, mid-off-season meatloaf coming, coming soon. in May-ish. So, not sure why he did it. Shouldn't have done it. It didn't look good. It didn't fare well for him, and it would really it left a lot to be desired. And nobody would even give a shit right now what that three cone drill it was. Right. Um, but that being it? said, if you watch him run the drills, he did run some different routes, and he looked pretty decent doing that. So that's a nice little positive in that uh, column there. He ran a, a, some in some some bigger in breaking routes and, and such and uh didn't look terrible doing it because you know the first thing that everyone wants to bring up is the the limited route tree for sure for sure so is that something that uh bothers you guys there or you guys like it bothers me in the sense that i didn't see it but i think there's ability to do more i think what he was asked to do at old miss was just run deep and run comebacks that's what he was asked to do and he did those things pretty well while he was on the field so right he was asked. He did his job. Do your job, Jay Wayne. Um, I don't. I don't think it bothers me because what he does well, he does it so well. And if you can score deep touchdowns, I mean, he's got the comeback working in his favor. And there was times when you saw him run a slant and he was open. The quarterback wasn't really ever looking at him a ton. Right. The quarterback wasn't great in his own right. So that I think. The quarterback and the play calling should all be taken into account in that situation there. I don't think the play calling was super great. And two, you you have a guy who missed it chunks of time. Uh, so, you know, never got a whole bunch of reps. I'm sure the quarterback is not super comfortable with DK Metcalf because he's not there at least la at large chunks. So they haven't, you know, been building a rapport with each other. And the quarterback is up and down and just clearly wasn't. When you watch the Metcalf tape, you, you can see that he's not looking at Metcalf on a lot of times where Metcalf is open. Yep, for sure. Um, so I think, you know, and then he did what he did, what he was asked to do. Do your job, like you said. So I, I don't think obviously you can take it away as a negative. How about the fact that he only plays on one side of the field? Is yep, that is no that like that too. is only, that he only plays the left? You see that, him. I saw him a couple times on the right, but not a ton. But is that something that is like, oh, he only does this. So there's, you know, are you guys is that something that you're worried about? I, I think I used to be worried about it, but then I saw Juju Smith-Schuster, and I was like, okay, well, that doesn't yeah. matter anymore. I mean, I don't know. There's probably some percentile of percentages and not, <laughs> but who cares? I don't, I don't, I don't care. Yeah, that, I, I think that's more of an indictment on the team than him. Yeah, I think that's more on the. I think that's more on Matt Luke and the offensive play calling. Than right. I don't think if you move him to the other side of the field, he's going to be like, "What do I do over here?" Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, right. Um, what do you got? Well, I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Or we just put both hands up. <laughs> what are you doing over there? Uh, so any any uh, any of your other negatives with with DK here? While we're I mean, injury history. Oh, for sure the injury history. I mean, the guy only had sixty seven career scare catches. Scare you more than anything else, or is it just kind of you think it was bad luck? Is it a prone thing? What do you think? So he broke his foot the second game as his freshman year. Don't know what type of break that was. They're pretty tight lipped in college with these injuries are. So I don't know if he has a screw. Or if it was just some sort of, you know, I'm going to make a word, metatarsal. I don't know if that would require. I, I'm not a, I don't know. I shouldn't even said that. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know if it a required a screw or not. Um, but then he had a neck injury seven games into 18. this past season, which required surgery. So anytime you, you hear that, I can see why people are like scared of him. But I mean, I think he's, I, I think. NFL teams are probably going to take this gamble on him and take him pretty high. And if they're willing to take that risk, then I'm not going to let this injury history weigh too, too much on me, I guess. It doesn't seem like a prone injury thing. It seems like some bad luck right. and terrible things that happen to him. Right. Yeah, Mike, I don't Yeah, I don't think he's he's not in the same vein as Rodney Anderson is when it comes to injury history, but Yeah, but I think that I don't even well, think that's, that's a I don't even think that's a prone thing. I think that was also a couple of bad lucks. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> it wasn't like a, a, a like it wasn't like a shoulder over and over again or an ankle over and over. No, for again sure, they're they're completely different things. There's a bunch of different random. Like, yeah, is Keenan Allen injury prone now that he's had two he healthy seasons in a row? Is he is Matthew Stafford injury prone anymore? No, 
So right. if you have a couple of health, healthy seasons, you're not injury prone anymore. I mean, you're more at risk. We'll call it. So are you you don't does that affect your minimally. view of Keenan Allen? No, I'm I'm talking for DK only minimally. It's a minimal yeah. effect. Minimal it's it's down, recent, right? so it's very recent. Any other concerns with with Metcalf? A little droppy. The drop inconsistent hands. I'd say with the three guys that we're going to talk about, them all of them have somewhat inconsistent hands. With there's your, there's bad drops in all this tape. But I would say that there's probably more drops in DK's tape, and there's w- less of his tape to watch. I would I wouldn't call it his bad hands. I would call them inconsistent hands because there's some other plays where he makes some fantastic catches. Sure, and the spectacular catch rating on Madden is going to be pretty strong. I think for sure. <laughs> um, anything else? I, I don't always see great effort in the blocking arena. I think he could be a mad blocker, but he uh, it, they're also getting blown out in a couple of these games, so it's. It's tough to really care too much when you're losing by a bunch, but yeah, I mean, I mean if you put up 27 bench reps, obviously you got some some strength there. Yeah, you and just, if you see I this guy see with him. a shirt off, I mean, Yowzers. there's some scrunks. <laughs> Looks photoshopped. <laughs> yeah. So positives then. Any 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 other things that that you guys are super excited about? I know we kind of brushed over a couple, but oh, he's fast. He real fast. He real fast. He's scary fast. For Especially sure. for that size, six six three, we're calling him a right six three rounded down from three eighths. So any any other big positives that you guys are really? I mean, I think he makes pretty decent adjustments to the ball in air. I th- I think he's a good ball tracker. I think uh, you know I think of that Alabama play when he beasted the dude off the line of scrimmage and then the ball was overthrown and he was able to accelerate with some bursts and get right underneath it and make the catch. It was. And have some long arms. And yeah, it was the first play of the game. Go out there and grab it. Yep. Which, yeah, when, which, big, which big, game was that? That was the Alabama game. Oh, it was the yeah. first play of the game. Yeah. He, he makes that outside outside step move, and the and the corner tries to kind of jam him that way, and he wipes that off <laughs> and goes. Right. And that's another thing is, like, he's probably the scariest of the wide receivers I've looked at as far as beating press coverage. Like, I mean, he's a solid hand fighter, and he's really strong and long arms, and he's just – his release moves off the line of scrimmage are pretty nice. It's fast. It's quick. Yeah. It's really hard to jam him. And, I mean, you make one little mistake or you get too far on him and you let him swim past you, I mean, it's yeah. it's, a, it's a houser. So I, th- I think – yeah, I, th- I think that's a good call. I think he's, he's, a, pretty, he's a pretty good hand fighter, and I, I do like his releases off the line. Not a lot of jamming of him uh, in the college game. Um, I think that'll change a little bit in the pros because – I think you're a lot more scared in the in the uh, in the NCAA of of coming up and jamming him and the guy not being maybe strong enough to handle him and then not being quick enough to maybe get back on you know every single play and knowing how fast the guy is yeah um, which could change a little bit in the NFL but I mean he's still you know elite fast so yeah um, and he's so big that it leads to to pretty solid run after the catch yep. He's so big and fast, right. and like which is something I think they missed out on a little bit there in, right. in Old Miss. Like get, never throw him screens. Short, and stuff. short. Well, they did throw him some screens, and when they did, it was great. But shorten up some routes, give him some slants, let him hit some posts. Like right. It just it, the cross. He, if he can get go across the field with this guy, like that's all you need to do. And I I think that's going to be the biggest thing at the next level is who drafts him, the situation they put him in, and how they build this kid up, and and how they're going to execute him in their offense like I don't I don't think he needs the offense quote unquote catered to him but it's it's going to be how they use him and I think he could be super effective it just you can't just go out there and be like hey run on the field and, and do a comeback like there's other things that this guy can do he's not incapable of doing these he was open on different routes they just didn't throw it to him he was locked in when you watch him you see AJ Brown out there catching balls moving chains be he, and he played a lot so he was out there with what's the quarterback's name I can never pronounce Jordan it. Ta'amu who's not fun to watch. No, I and watched him last night for two hours. It wasn't fun. He is certain, like AJ Brown's, like seemed to be just in watching the Metcalf tape. Haven't watched Brown, but like seems to be the safety valve. Seems to be the guy who's moving the sticks. And Metcalf is is not getting looked at all the time. And again, could be because Metcalf's not on the field and on the practice field and not familiar. And like Jordan, whatever his name is, number ten is uh, is just really not looking his way on sometimes where there was plenty of opportunities where I saw if you would have just look DK's way he probably could have scored some touchdowns on these shorter routes that he was running if you would have just got the ball to him but you went to AJ Brown who was open and got you the first down and that was it yeah so I mean I think there was a ton of missed opportunities there and I think I, I think DK's fine doing other things and then uh shout out to I, I can never pronounce his last name Brett call 
Kalos, Kalamos, Kal- I'm not Kalamer. I can't. I, I always I'll look for, it up. I always forget what his last name is, but he he has a nice video about DK in there, and uh, he compares him to Calvin Johnson, Coleman, something like that. Um, Coleman. Yeah, and he breaks down. He, he, he Calvin shows Johnson, you Calvin Johnson's route tree, and you know he made his living off it, of four routes. How it was basically goes posts and uh, slants. and slants essentially. Yeah, but that means he's got a 200 percent better route tree than DK does. Well, yeah, but I mean, it's just not what he was asked to do. And then, you know, there is examples of him doing those other things and just not getting the ball thrown his way. I also think that comparing Ole Miss's offense to Georgia Tech's offense might be a bit. Right. No, and, and he's talking about Calvin Johnson in the pros. Oh, uh, four routes, Calvin Johnson, four routes that Calvin Johnson it, ran it, in the pros. It was it was 75 percent of his route tree. Right. Was, yeah. Were those routes. He also um, easily ran other routes, but all those were in a much smaller percentage than. Right. So, I mean, you can do that. And for like we talked about at the three cone drill for these bigger receivers to throttle down and make these really decisive cuts. It's pretty difficult for them. Calvin Johnson wasn't out there throttling down and making all these crazy decisive cuts. He just was being able to keep his momentum rolling on those slants and on those posts. And he's really fast and big. So you can throw the ball his way and, and just you got to get it in his hands. Yeah. And now he's a menace. Like, and I, I, you know, obviously Calvin Johnson and DK is not, I'm not saying DK Metcalf is Calvin Johnson by any means. And to your point, like Calvin Johnson at college was the only show in town at Georgia tech. And you have three potential, uh, NFL caliber receivers at Ole Miss right now. So, you know, compare apples to apples here. Yeah. All I right. Think, well, I think another thing we, d- we need to talk about is, is DK's high point ability. I mean, you saw that drink. drink. <laughs> Say the word high point. You got a drink, and uh, there's there's some other ones, but but in the Kentucky finish with power it, drink. <laughs> <laughs> Proceed, sir. Um, yeah, the Kentucky game. I mean, the guy just goes up there and gets it, and that's a game winning touchdown right there. That was, and they that means they trusted him. They just basically. Did, Amu throw, I think that might have even been a uh, good old Shea Patterson back in his old Miss days. I don't know if it was Patterson or Amu, but they just threw the ball up to him, trusted him to get the ball up there, and, and he got the ball up there. Patterson I, would have had to have been in 16, I think. No, 17. Was it? Yep, sure was. Okay, then you're probably right. But, yeah, I mean, he did, he did a nice job again, and that might have been against a... So that was a game on the line? That was game on the line. Last, I, think, I think I don't know if it was the last part of the game. There was under, there was under 30 seconds That's a ago. big corner on him. I, I, think, think. It was, I think it was Lonnie, Lonnie Johnson. Yeah, I think yeah, it I was think so Lonnie too. Johnson. Again, he's an NFL. He's definitely going to get drafted. He's probably right. a day two, early day three guy, but, I mean, he's an NFL caliber, NFL caliber corner. He's probably 6'2", and DK just skies over there and gets the ball from him. Right. I, I, I'm, I'm with you. All right, so... Uh, well, let's save the. We'll, well, after we're done with all three, we'll come back and we'll put them all in some sort of a ranking and talk about you know how they fit and what we think about them in that capacity. You want to add any uh, AJ Brown on the end of this thing? Yeah, I think a- I think AJ does. I think that AJ is the antith- and the antithesis of DK in that you're buying DK for his ceiling, but you're buying AJ Brown for his floor. Um, I think at worst this guy's a high end wide receiver three. I've been seeing a lot of juju comps. I think you guys have seen those as well too. I think my comp for him was a more athletic Cooper Cup, and if you can get that, I mean that's money in the bank. Yeah. So I think I have I have AJ Brown pretty high up there. So he's definitely a guy who's going to be in a top top five rookie pick for most people. Yeah. I, well, I, we haven't. Me and Jason haven't looked at uh, AJ Brown, but I knew you had, and and. They they are in the same school and semi synonymous. Uh, so yeah, Demarcus Lodge. Don't even worry about him. You don't have to watch him. He's, he, <laughs> he, he, he's he is butt cheeks. Now the guy the guy is excellent around the sidelines though. He is phenomenal on the sidelines. But after that, not much else there from the good old DL. All right. Well, we'll get a little bit more DK on this uh, on the rankings between these three. But on the tail end, you want to take a break and we'll come back with uh, you want to do Harry or Butler next. I don't know. Let's talk about it at break. We'll be back. Oh, it's a teaser. (laughs) 